Good morning. We are going to start a little earlier since I have some cool demo um, for you guys. I presented this in black hat, but I think I will change a little bit of style um, to DEF CON style. Before I started, I want to have a quick survey. How many people here, um, for the job reason or for care list reason, that at least have uh, hack one website and gain the data from back end? Can you raise your? Wow, pretty good, cool. So, my name is Fan, and uh, today I'm going to present a next generation web application vulnerability scanner with deep injection, high performance, and low false alarm. So everybody knows, right? Web application security is a big problem, so we are just going to skip. Most of the database in backend, interesting enough, Oracle SQL Server, DB2 and the MySQL, I think, took 90% of the sh shares, more than that. So this is about a pen test tool, first time revealed. And uh, it's not a so blind SQL injection tool. I will show you a bit later. Uh, fully automated, powerful, and uh, with the bunch of um, pen test policy for different database. Here's a quick glance of how this tool looks like. But I will show you a flash demo very soon. So um, in the left side, you can see it's the web URL. Then it has the Oracle detected in the back end automatically. The SQL injection type, tables, belongs to this web user, columns, and even the contents. Right side is the vulnerability report. In short, this is a cross database support um, pen test tool with 100,000 lines of C++ code, high performance, very flexible, extendable pen test framework, which I will describe later. Very low false alarm, because if you already gain all the data, do you think it's still false alarm? <laughs> and uh, it's fully automated. So we all know that through the fi firewall is just not enough with this case. And there's so many things from a database that you can gain. So before I continue, I would, I would like to present the first part of the flash demo um, for you. So here we have a movie rental program. Pretty cool web application. It's not a Netflix, by the way, okay? It just looks like. So there is a movie. You can, you can go to the movie. It's called a Zines movie. But unfortunately, it's also a sign of the SQL injection. So you can just paste to the matrix tool and then right click scan. Now you can see that it detects the back end is the Oracle and the, the SQL injection type, the instance name, and the, the username who connect to the back end database. So you will see that most of the time it's right click, left click style. So now you right click and then get a table content. Oh, sorry, get a table count. How many tables belongs to this user? So that's a, um, I will come to the slides later. Matrix has a very complex um, sequence to do all the pen tests from beginning to the um, very deep. So now we get the table count is 11. Now if you right click again, the, the, the menu is different. Now you can get the table names. So all the table names, you can just uh, select a few or select everything through so here and uh, try to uh, gain the table name in the back end. So there are different ways to gain the table names. Um, date dictionary, you can also brute force, you can also arrow based. So several ways um, that can count in. So here is the vulnerabilities that is already reported in backend, so that later on we can export to the CSV or whatever. So the get table name phase it will it will gain the information um, with only like about ten seconds. So with all that iteration, we get is an address table name. 
So this is only one way. We'll show you another way, which is brute force. Think about it, how many times you design your tables, like a user, username, profile, member, order, right? So this is just a common sense. If you want to, so now we already get the table name. We, another table name is the member. So now we come to the auditing panel, which is uh, you can choose. There's many policies uh, we has been built in to audit the, the the backend database. So since we already know the database type, for example, right now we have default password checking, and also the password um, complexity checking. All the parameter configurations like dictionary accessibility and the user privileges. This is an important piece, right? And also the SQL area. What's the raw SQL in, in the back end? All this is done through the uh, web interface. Now I reverse select and then I try to gain all the hash and the name from the back end database. Since the Oracle is hashed, right? The, the password. But that's okay. The matrix has a built-in um, password crack for the Oracle, which is extremely fast. You can see that my password is pretty good, QAZWSX, but the matrix is even better. So it's cracked on the fly. Um, the password is cracked on the fly. So also you can see that uh, there is default password in there as well. So. We will come back to this later. So here we have the cross-site scripting um, from, um, functionality and also your own defined abilities. So also you can have get a proxy list so that uh, all your traffic can be dis distributed. It, it will look like uh, um, from all over the world. So it's uh, pretty neat to have. Here's um, and here's the hijack hijacking feature, and here's another cool thing. Okay, <laughs> so we'll come back to the slides. Come back to normal. Okay. So what's the essential fact? It's based basically first. Parameter defense is just not enough, right? With the web-based um, and the database securities. Database are all different, all different vulnerabilities, different design, but there are many things in common, which I'll, I will describe later. And database has to maintain a lot of information in the back end. And the, the cooler the database, and the cooler it is, and the more information you need to gain. For example, Oracle 10G, the flashback, is a good example. If it want to gain, get back to the previous data, it has to think about it from design, right? It has to maintain the SQL that it used before. So think if you can get that SQL, that's useful for you, right? Through the web, web applications. Use the context, another example. Um, finally, um, harden a database is not so easy. At least it's much difficult than just talking, right? So here's the pen test sequence that it will take. First, just like normal scanner will do, it will detect if it is SQL injectable. But that is far less than enough, right? Then second, just as Nmap will send tens of packets to detect uh, the OS types, right? Uh, based on TTL, window size. Matrix will send tens of different requests to deter determine what's the database type in backend and what's the versions. And then it will get the current database properties, such as what web user has connected to the database, and uh, what's the instance name, what stuff uh, versions. And then you, ch you can get basic, pretty much whole database dictionary. That's the um, one thing. But also, like I said, there's other ways to gain. And then you can start dancing, because you can do advanced injection and advanced auditing, because you all already know the context. I will have to skip some of the slides because I have very limited time, um, and 36 slides. But you, you pretty much, it's very detailed here. Um, database in common things, roles and privileges for different database, 
and special spots. There's always the interesting part, extended uh, um, procedures, and, um, and it can even use it to guess, for example, just the UTL TCP, even that can use to guess the uh, SA password. It's a lot of things that you cannot even, um, maybe it's beyond your imagine. And weak password, port stuff. So here's the mind manager function on the graph. So you can e either configure your browser to point to the port which matrix will li listen. So matrix will um, monitor the session and the traffic automatically and then detect if the URL you are browsing is, uh, um, sorry, it reminds me more demos. So it will automatically detect the web URL uh, if it's vulnerable. But of course, you can always just directly detect, um, targeting the web URL and then um, gain the, all the vulnerability information. Then you can gain the database dictionary, blind injection, search the interesting tables, and then uh, even do the brute force. You can also audit many things, authentication, authorization. You can also do the penetration test for specific spots, like uh, um, privilege escalation and all the kinds of stuff. Here's a snapshot. Uh, you probably already saw it. So URL type, database name, username, task, get everything, field name, field count, all fields. You can search for specific spots, like a password, user, so for auditing stuff, you can um, check the password, check the um, configuration weakness, and the versions, it's Oracle 8i. This is pretty old. The one I was using was better, 10G. So get the use, use, use password and hashes, and OS commands. So here's an example here um, that you already got the, based on the hash you get, it's cracked on the fly because uh, based on the username and the hash, it's the, it's, uh, um, you already can do a rainbow um, style crack. Pen test style, if you do the, um, so the just browsing the browser and use matrix as a proxy, then you can hijack the sessions in between. So it, will, it can even hijack the SSL, so I, would, I will mention that a little bit later. But it can be much easier. For example, here, the, all the pen tests are just, it's uh, again, right click style. So here you can get all the extended procedures. You can run OS command and uh, um, do, doing whatever you want, on pretty much. So authentication, current user privileges, password check, system user views, and uh, as I mentioned, the system and DBS and PEEP password can be pre-generated, right? Because you already know the username. So based on diction, you, you can generate the hash already. And for Oracle 10G, there's a pretty huge leak, which is that the DBS and MP password can be get through a simple query. So the reason is that it's not hashed, it's encrypted. And uh, more importantly, the, for 10G, the default installation will put sys system and the DBS and MP share the same password. So once you know the DBS and MP password, you will know the sys and system. Think about it. Um, database configuration, init parameters, many parameters auditing, um, and uh, or, uh, for different databases, for different uh, um, contexts and uh, policies. Configurations, so an important feature about the uh, matrix is that it's extremely extendable, so that uh, if there's a vulnerability released, for example, there's no need to change the code, or 99% of, of the time, no need to change the code, just add a configuration file, and then it will automatically add to your pen test policies. So, raw SQL auditing, 
An important thing from the web interface, you may very, very interested in what is the SQL running in backend, right? So to gain the SQLs to give you much more abilities to gain the things. Okay, I always like to use Taiji to describe the uh, two modes of the matrix. One is the in mode, basically passive, right? Very silent and quiet, but it detects everything for you if it's acting as a proxy mode because you are just browsing, right? And then, uh oh, suddenly there's a re report in backend. And young mode, basically you already see from the flash demo, it's direct targeting the, the web and uh, hard multi-threading. Proxy mode, as long as you browse point to it, it's all right to do everything, but uh, here's a very cool SSL man in the middle. I, at least on top of my head, I don't know there's any tool that do that. Does anybody know um, to do the hijacking for HTTPS? The reason is that it's uh, supposed to secure the channel, right? But uh, here, Matrix did a special way, which is that it's a special matrix in the middle. So then it will assemble the HTTP traffic. It will listen in a local port, 127, and uh, assemble the HTTP traffic to the HTTPS representing and send it to remotely and then get it and disassemble it. From that way it can um, audit all the sessions, all the parameters in between so you can hijack it. In mode, here's in mode example. Uh, automatically detect, okay, oh, oh, MS SQL number, SQL injection type. Young mode, I already described. Um, get post and uh, also you can use proxy to targeting the stuff. Advanced features like privilege escalation, for example, 9i, DBMS metadata. Um, pretty much you can make use of the, the some SQL injection in the procedures to gain more privileges. 10G, um, DBMS advisor, and uh, even the model SQL stuff if it's installed, then it will give you much more power to do the special um, pen test. And there's many things such as HTMDB, XMDB, and the report servers. This is a specific things, but uh, it's also very interesting. So keep adding the policy, like I said, to gain more and more. It's very important because you always want to keep the pace. You don't want to have something last, last year or two years ago, and uh, that's that's not so useful, right? That's needed, but not so useful. There's a, uh, also you can um, audit the, um, some network related or some evil procedures using the outband um, SQL injection. Pentest capability plugin I already mentioned, but again, this is very one of the key. You can add the policies on the fly. So similar tools. I don't know if it's so similar, but uh, I'll put it here. Evasion technicals. So this is an interesting part, right? If l right, most of the ideas like uh, will detect, okay, one equals to one, or some of the patterns, but it's an iteration. Last year in Black Hat, I presented uh, the um, defense techniques about SQL injection. So it's quite hard, it's quite hard. I mean, to think about it, there's so many variations. So I want to get to there. There's also some interesting um, evasion. For example, you can use soundex, a function equals to something, right? Looks totally different. So that way, to catch th that pattern is really difficult. You can also um, lower down your threads. So it will look, and also distribute by proxies so that it will look like a more normal. Defense techniques. Default installation and configuration is usually lame. Dictionary protection, least privileges. Always um, bear in mind for application, especially for different applications, and uh, um, do a regularly pen testing and uh, continuous monitoring. So before I come to the next demo, I would thank you for everyone for listening, and uh, I have to mention my partner Xiaorong. He did a really fantastic job. He's really cool, um, but sorry he couldn't come um, join me. And uh, special thanks to Alexander for great comments. And uh, 
the one of the big reason I'm here, which is I want to get your feedback. I want to get your comments so that uh, uh, make it better and better. If you have any um, suggestions or comments, send to send to the info dbappsecurity.com. Um, so we will come to the next demo. We have two minutes, I think. Oh, I have ten. Oh, cool. Sure. Ten is fine. I I I should not make so hard if I know I have ten. So here's another web application, JSP Books, selling the book, right? Security book, looks like. So you right click. This time is a MS SQL number SQL injection, and uh, the database name is web. Username is SA. Okay, um, the vulnerability level is of course high. So again, here you already have 23 tables in backend. Not bad. So can get the table name and get a few. Here the advanced one, you can basically search the table name. Sometimes if that has like 200 tables, you just want to search some of the specific points. So it's getting easier. Now you have quite a few tables and the custom info looks interesting, right? Custom info, that's always the, I mean, from my point of view, but I'm sure you're the same. So now you get a field account, then you can get all the fields. Again, it's a right click style. And uh, coming later, there's a, the end, there was OS command execution. That's probably one of the few places that you need to use the keyboard to type, because you need to run OS commands to as you wish. So now you have a few interesting uh, fields. Name, password, so custom ID, login name. So we can just gain a few just for um, demo purpose. So again, I have to emphasize, all this through, is through the web application uh, interface. There's no need any more information about it. So. Here is coming for another, come to another fun part. It will get all the content from the tables. Welcome to the matrix. <laughs> the speed is quite fast. This is in real speed because the engine is optimized. Um, Right, so now we can come to another fun part, which is the penetration. So now you have all the context, right? What database it is in backend, what's the web user connected, what's the vulnerabilities of the web application. Now you can look at the, like what's the DS name, okay? I don't know why I have my name in yet, so. Um, you can also, um, another thing is that you can also look at uh, how many evil procedures is available. So that's another thing, because uh, you first want to see how many things you can do in hand, right? Then you can do more things. So you, you can see that from the beginning to the end, it's always step by step, but helping each other to get deeper um, and deeper for the, all the injection. So, okay, we have Read error log, get pro protocol stuff. Okay, you can always get more things because it um, it just uh, it will give you from the number of things that you can you can choose. Okay, so 
enum error logs. That's not bad, right? Now you have an OS command type cboot dot init file. So it run OS command for you and then tell you everything. So I will let the demo go on and uh, thank you very much for listening and I'm taking questions. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, say again, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, good question. Uh, there's a project safe. So no matter where you are, you, if you save a project, next time if you restart, it will already in the state in there. Good question. Um, yeah, so for middleware, basically right now, um, the current uh, version is uh, we'll try to inject as much as possible. So it will depend on how middleware um, process the parameters, the et cetera. And also, um, we, we are planning to add in more like specific middleware, like vulnerabilities in, in, in the policies for it, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, specifically, I did not, but my friend did once, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I'm not kidding, because uh, um, we already have, <laughs> okay, you yeah, trust me, okay? Because uh, um, the, we, ha we already have a beta tester, which is a very big company, so they can test their own applications um, through the pen test. So I'm, I'm so busy with this, so I won't have time to to hack stuff, yeah. So, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll have beta test plan, um, like slowly going. Yeah. So you can send emails uh, to request it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you mean for the SSL uh, hijacking? Okay. So basically, what it do is that. Uh, Actually, I have an SSL flash, uh, later on I can show you. But basically what they do is that, because this tool is in your machine, right? So in 127, so it's your trusted man. So it's like a trusted man in the middle. So then you, through the HTTP, for example, browsing the local, just like your local port that uh, matches were, were listening. So for example, if you want the HTTPS www.abc.com, then something, then, the matrix need knows that this traffic in this port is uh, talking to that HTTPS. Then it will assemble all your, um, you, you are, from your point of view, from browser, still uh, looking at the remote website, right, browsing. But actually in the middle, it will assemble all the HTTPS traffic for you and then uh, monitoring the sessions, if that's the vulnerabilities or the parameter vulnerabilities inside. So that's basically how it works. But I, I can show you a um, uh, flash later on, yeah. Yeah, it's traceable. So if you, if you turn on uh, hijack that uh, option, then it will stop there, and then you can change something, add a parameter, and then click send. It will send it, so. Any questions, more questions? All right, thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah, send me email if you have any comments. <laughs>